Hi everybody, thanks for joining us this evening. You can all move a little bit closer if you want, because I don't think we're going to get a lot more people coming in, but uh, I'll just go ahead and get us started. Uh, so thanks for joining us for this panel. It's been uh, about a month in the making, right? <laughs> you guys all got lots of emails from me. But uh, these six extraordinary student writers will introduce themselves in a second. But I would like to ground us for just a moment in the place where we are writing. We begin by acknowledging with honor and respect the indigenous nations on whose traditional territories the university now stands and whose historical relationships with the land continue to this day. We also acknowledge the elders past and present, including MSU's current Council of the Elders, and humbly ask for their guidance. The Valley of the Flowers has been and remains a place of learning for Native American peoples who for millennia have passed ways of knowing, being, and doing from one generation to the next. While a land acknowledgement is not enough, it is an important social justice and decolonial practice that promotes indigenous visibility and a reminder that we are unsettled indigenous land. Please note that the Honors Presents Lecture Series welcomes diverse opinions, beliefs, perspectives, and experiences. We encourage all participants to think critically and process the information presented in an open-minded and holistic manner. This presentation is a reflection and celebration of these amazing individuals' unique backgrounds and expertise. So just a couple notes on how this will how this will go. Um, I'll be emceeing, I think that's a verb. You guys can tell me you're the experts. Uh, from up here. So we'll alternate between, we have a bunch of pre-submitted questions from people, and then if you guys have any questions, I'll be watching for hands in between uh, speaker points as well. So, And then uh, there are copies of Curious Tests. Owen has them it's for afterwards if you are interested in looking at our very own research journal. And then Lastly, if you need to be scanned for credit, see me afterwards, and then of course you can come up and chat with the panelists for a few minutes and get to know them. So, would you guys like to introduce yourself? Oh, that's you. Oh, that's me. <laughs> um, hi everyone, my name is Owen Burroughs. I am a senior here. I'm double majoring in microbiology and political science. Um, I'm here at a table full of writers. I'm decidedly not a writer. Um, but I was part of a really great team that uh, put together Curiositas, which is our first um, undergraduate research journal at MSU. And I'm really interested in communicating science and you know, the ways that science communication can be used as a tool for tackling issues in society. Cool stuff. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Pushya. I'm a senior here at MSU, double majoring in neuroscience and English literature. Um, I work with Owen on Curiositas. Um, it's been awesome to be able to work with him on an idea that he called me with from across the pond. Um, I don't know if I'd call myself a writer or a reader or whatever, but I think what I'm really interested in is really making sure that students here on campus, particularly those who are invested in undergraduate research, whatever that looks like, have a platform that they can voice their experience and really make sure that they can communicate that experience to people who might be interested or to the greater Bozeman national community. Uh, I'm Finley Shepard. I am a junior. Uh, I'm pursuing a double degree in American Studies and Fish and Wildlife Management. Um, I am a culture writer for The Exponent and I have been since last spring, I think. Um, and I kind of got involved in that because I really wanted to write about a lot of the stories that I had been listening to on campus that I wanted more people to know about. Um, and that's kind of why I got involved in American Studies and Fish and Wildlife in the first place. Um, and I really like that to be where my writing goes in the future. Yeah, I'm Bryce. Um, I'm a junior land rehabilitation major, um, and I, I work at the Writing Center. I have helped on the Orange Couch Newsletter Committee team to publish um, an Orange Couch Newsletter for the last two semesters. Um, yeah, and I like writing and helping people with writing. Hi, I'm Sarah King. I'm a senior here with a double of English Lit and American Studies and then a minor in Japanese. And I also work at the Writing Center, and I worked along with Bryce on the Orange Couch newsletter. And so a lot of my personal writing focuses in on research and theory-based 
modes, but I think also at the Writing Center we do strive to look at more like community-based writing and reaching towards all like corners of campus. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Abby Bernard. I also work at the Writing Center as a peer tutor and then also as a research fellow. So right now we're doing research into good communication and engineering, um, which is super interesting because I'm not an engineer. I am an American Studies major as well. Um, I don't know how I may have got like all of the American Studies majors in the, in the school here. Uh, and then I have minors in Native American Studies and Hispanic Studies. Um, and I've also been helping out, uh, helping out with Curiositas. Um, I guess I'll start us off with, with a question and then we'll rotate and if you guys have a question for the next one, all right? Uh, so a question that we got submitted was, as a student, I struggle with making my academic writing engaging for others to read. What are your suggestions on combating this issue? Really going down the line or is it just whoever <laughs> participates? Just go for it, <laughs> whoever jumps in. Um, I know for me, I have to do a significant amount of science writing for fish and wildlife that I really don't enjoy about like pea plants and stuff. Um, and for me, it's kind of about trying to find something that I can connect to it in an interesting way. So I remember I wrote a science piece for Bio 170 that I talked about when the sun dies out, what will happen to pea plants because that sounded cool to me. So um, I think there is usually ways that you can make it connect to one of your interests, and it takes a little extra effort, but I definitely think it's worth it because it makes assignments a lot easier. So. One other thing I'd suggest, sorry, I don't know if I cut someone off, is like answering the so what question um, in your writing, whatever discipline you're writing in or whatever like field you're in, there's always gonna be that so what, like why does this matter, why am I writing about this? And that to me is where that level of engagement can really come in because that's Answering that question kind of affects everyone in our community. And you know, I think maybe to those lines, um, something that I've really, you know, struggled with, especially with technical writing, is, you know, I think there's a temptation to try and put your ego into the words that you're writing down. So, you know, especially when you're talking about something that you've just learned about, and you've learned all this jargon, and you've learned all these complex ideas, I think. You know, it can be very easy when you're writing something that a professor is going to read to try and make yourself sound smart and really, you know, play yourself up. Um, and it's a real struggle for me to take a step back and be like, you know, I'm going to write the best thing that I can, and I'm probably going to sound dumb, and I might sound like I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm oversimplifying things. But actually, I tend to think that when I think I'm doing too much and oversimplifying too much, that's when the writing is best. And so, you know, it's, it's been a process that I'm, I'm still going through of trying to separate myself away from that desire to, to really play up what I've learned, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think um, one thing I would add is you, always have, you should always know your story, you know, whether it's writing for a, a professional journal in science or academic writing in the context of the humanities. Regardless of what it is that you're actually writing about, if you don't know the beginning and the ending of the narrative you're trying to communicate, then it's unlikely that your audience will figure that out for you. And so regardless of how you present that story, whether it's in a linear or non-linear fashion, if you know that story really well and you know the intricacies of it, and you know exactly what you want to communicate to the audience, then that I think is the most important step in terms of actually translating the material you have as uh, maybe as a thinker into something that's communicable in the form of writing or other media. I mean, I think it's a bit stereotypical of me to bring up as like the writing tutor side of the table. Um, but I think keeping things interesting is a lot on like the sentence level too. Like you want to choose fun words um, and have fun in like the small ways that you can. Like. Don't choose a boring word, choose an interesting word and like just those small choices and like cutting out parts of sentences that don't mean anything um, can really help make things readable. So you might have a really interesting topic and like all of those other things, but if you don't have fun with your language and communicate well on basic levels, you know, it's not necessarily going to be conveyed. Mm -hmm. I 
I think the first thing that I thought of when I heard that was thinking of the language that you use. I think often, especially in academic writing in undergrad, there's a tendency to think that you have to use complex language to get your point across in order to sound academic. And I think that while it's okay to use that language, it often alienates some of your reader base no matter what you're writing. And so I think making sure that you're thinking about accessibility in terms of thinking about engagement because if someone can't understand your thesis, it's hard to become engaged further in the writing. Okay. Yeah, like, and what you guys are saying too, like, you kind of talks about like agency in, in your mm. writing, and that's, that makes it fun kind of automatically to think you're in control. Mm -hmm. okay. Audience question? Uh, kind of off of that, I like I tend to find myself helping my friends with a lot of their papers and stuff, and just kind of like reading over them before they submit them. Just because like you know I'm an honor student, so they're like, ooh, you must be better at this than I am. So the thing that I often run into is like I just want to fix it for them without like kind of seeing what they would say before I fix it for them, and I like am so quick to jump right to that. So how would you how would you guys maybe suggest like trying to get their input before I'm just like, oh, I can see how this would fit better. Like, I don't know, that's kind of more of like a tutory type question. Yeah, I would say like, I think a lot about like consent with that. Like just ask where they're at. Like, hey, like what do you mean by this? Because a lot of the times I think when I first began tutoring, I was always like, oh, like, do this. And then I realized that the suggestion that I made was not what they were meaning to say with the sentence. So like, just talking and asking rather than like saying something um, is helpful. Yeah, for the exponent, we have to submit our piece to our section editor and then the editor in chief before it goes out. and. What I tend to get critiqued for is what are you trying to say and how about I like help you say it differently. So I think that a lot of writing can break down at the point of how you say it, but I think if you ask your friend what are you trying to say and they tell you and you understand and all you're doing is helping them say that in maybe a better, cleaner, more accessible way, then I think that allows them to learn as well as allow you to fix it if you want to, so. Another like theoretical, like this might be a little theoretical approachy, so if not, but um, something that we talk about in the Writing Center is how when you're sitting down with that writer and with their writing as well, you're both gonna learn something from that communication. So kind of, I know you said like, oh, you're an honor student, so like, you know, fix it for me. So even just like dismantling that, like right off the bat, and being like, no, like I want to hear about your ideas. Like let's have a conversation about them and starting like from that ground level of, you're gonna learn something maybe about like what they're writing about or who, where they're coming from or anything like that. And then they're gonna learn something from you as well. So kind of having that kind of sort of reciprocity in mind when you approach that conversation to begin with, I think is helpful. Thanks guys. Also, you could apply to be a tutor. You have a week left. I learned a lot. See that. I learned a lot about, <laughs> about how to help people with writing. <laughs> <laughs> Another question that we had submitted was, why does writing have the place it does in your field, and what do you learn about writing from it? Yeah, I don't, I, I, it's hard to say. I think other than the fact that if you didn't have writing, I think a lot of it wouldn't work. You know, I mean, at least I'll, I'll speak from the science standpoint. I think so much of science is about discussion, and so much of science is about not just being skeptical for the sake of being skeptical, but being skeptical to necessarily understand more about observable phenomena. And beyond simply just providing a PowerPoint, writing gives you the opportunity to consolidate and clarify information that you've observed in the lab to members within your field. And it's really the most accessible medium possible. You know, not everyone has the time or energy to watch a presentation, but you can contact, you can do anything you want with a piece of writing. And that means throw in the language you want, that means contextualize a figure the way you would want to. So 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I think science and writing have a very strong tradition. I don't know if science would ever have gotten to the place it is without the foundations of publishing in that process. You can debate the merits of the publishing system, which I think Owen and I go back and forth about how sometimes frustrating it can be, but that doesn't negate the fact that writing itself is a crucial activity in science. Yeah, um, and I think to kind of touch on that, sorry, did, oh, no, I no, no. okay. Yeah. Um, just to kind of touch on what Pusha said, I think the biggest thing that I've learned as a microbiologist is that I hate most science writing. Like, I think the state of science writing is really misguided. Um, you know, I think writing is an incredibly powerful tool to be able to take all this data, all this information that you've come up with, and really, as Abby was talking about, give the so what. Say, like, here is why all these experiments I've done actually matter. Um, and I don't think science writing is really embraced like that. And that doesn't mean that you know, every single article has to be accessible to a wide audience, but I think a lot of people look at the writing process as sort of that last hurdle in an experiment. You, know, you write up, you, know, you do all these experiments, and then you're like, oh, I have to write up a paper. So you kind of throw it all together. Um, and then I think there's this whole, as Push is talking about, academic publishing process that really incentivizes people you know, to just put out whatever. As long as the data is good, the, the writing doesn't need to matter. And I think there's really a missed opportunity um, for people to really tell stories with the data they're coming up with, which is not to detract from sort of the validity, scientific validity of the data, but um, I think there's a lot of room for science writing to really be a tool to progress the field. You know, you're not doing science just to put out a paper. You're doing science to affect people. And I think it's that affecting people part that um, I want to see more of in the future. If I could just add one more quick thing. Writing's not always for other people. Like, if I think most scientists write just about the results on a daily basis, right? You do an experiment and you write about it, and that gives you a moment to actually reflect and permanently record the information that you have. So if you're not doing that, then there's not much science happening, or at least you're not remembering what you've just done. And if that's the case, then you might as well just start over with the same thing every day. So. That's exactly the vein I was going to go down is, I mean, I chose my two particular majors because I wanted to figure out how scientific and natural events are affecting particular communities. And I think that as I've been getting deeper and deeper into my years here at MSU, I've started to realize that now I think I write a lot to not only investigate that, but investigate how it affects me, kind of in that more selfish way. Um, because that does give me a personal connection to the field and to these topics, and I really enjoy that. And I think that, as you guys both said, I think that writing doesn't have to be for other people and it doesn't only have to affect other people. And science writing can be something about yourself, like why does climate change matter to other people, but why does it also matter to me? And why is it important that I spend my time raising awareness about it, you know, or something like that. Something else that comes to mind um, for me is that writing is communication and it's conversation and through conversation we make meaning and come to understanding. So in any field, like writing is going to happen, I'm sure you guys all like know that at this point, um, but I think to answer for like kind of everyone's discipline, it's a way of like understanding and making meaning. That was a really good question though. <laughs> Do you guys have another question? Has publishing and or working with student writing and creating a space for it changed your own relationship with writing, and how? I think it's made me put a lot more merit on the process of writing rather than the product of writing. I think that often, especially in an academic context where you're constantly being evaluated and your work is having like a, a value placed on it, I think that looking towards just the the process of working through ideas and figuring out what you want to write and why you want to write have 
I suppose, garnered more like appreciation for both my writing process and seeing that writing process and others in places like the Writing Center. I think being able to watch that happen was very underappreciated in my own sphere, I suppose. My experience was actually exactly opposite to that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's for me, I think I realized through the exponent and through reading peers' writing and being a part of more writing communities and having friends who enjoy writing and write for fun, I think I've realized that writing is a lot of those places that we see people's nature and people's ethics come out. And a lot of times I find spaces and circles and people that I want to be around through writing. I mean, I've met a lot of really amazing people that are still in my life through interviews I've done for The Exponent. And I think that because I come at writing with a certain, I want to write to make a difference, and I try to seek people out who are also trying to make a difference and who are also want to possibly communicate that through public writing, like The Exponent, has helped me and has kind of created a circle of people that I really enjoy. And that's why I say it's opposite, because I think I focus less on the process and more on the product of who wants to, who is trying to be written about, who is writing about things that matter, not, you know, I don't know, fluff pieces that I admit to writing a few times, so. <laughs> I think for me, being really involved in writing on campus and different aspects has just really hammered home the power of language for me. Um, kind of like Sarah mentioned, it's really easy when you have to like grind out four essays to think about as a transactional, this is for a grade sort of relationship. Um, but the words that we use to describe things matter because they shape how we think and feel about those things. And I think as, as a byproduct of being involved with different people's writing, and seeing writing all across campus in different aspects, I've really started to learn that language and writing is so powerful. I mean, for all the reasons that we've already talked about, but also like just like language is powerful, period. I think I didn't know that before I really dove deep into writing across campus. Uh, yeah, I guess I think working as a tutor has taught me a lot of empathy like towards myself in particular um, because writing is really hard like some people you know might be able to sit down and write and like it's a fun process for them it's really painful writing sucks um, and having people come in and like they're also like wow this sucks like I feel bad like I feel like this isn't good writing and I'm like no like everyone is sitting there like alone in their room like writing these things out and like having all of these emotions like oh wow I hate this like every bone in my body hurts right now and like that's okay you can still be a writer and a good writer even if you hate writing or you're not confident in it I don't hate writing I, it hurts sometimes <laughs> so and that's okay yeah if you have to say something you go ahead um, I don't know. I, I think, from my perspective, I think we actually have yet to see how much this journal can do and how much there is to learn about how people interact with this kind of stuff. I think oftentimes we know that other people write, but how many times do we actually get to see what it is that they're writing? And so I think that's what Owen and I and the rest of the team are so excited about with this journal, which is that we're giving people the opportunity to not only write about something, communicate their experience, but make it known to the public what that experience is and hopefully start conversations and have people say, hey, that's really cool. Like, I didn't know that that's what you were doing. I didn't know that's what you spent all your time doing. It's really cool to see that kind of printed and published in, in a format. So I think we get to see really how far that can take us and what we can learn from that. Totally. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to say too much about the journal. Um, but I think if there's one thing that we do that maybe not a lot of other journals do is I think we're radically interdisciplinary in a way that a lot of journals aren't radically interdisciplinary. Um, and as Pusha says, he's exactly right. Like it has been so cool to see 
what writing looks like in other disciplines. And not only just the final product, like reading this, but you know, sitting on the editorial board and corresponding with writers and seeing what the process looks like for somebody who's in ecology or um, I was just looking over a piece this morning that was about French film studies. Like th these are not things that I'm exposed with um, as a final product or as a process. Um, and so it's definitely, it's pushed me to keep an open mind about what the writing process looks like because it doesn't look the same for me as it does for a lot of other people. And I think that's shown me that there's room for me to expand and grow in my own writing and learn from, from other disciplines and writing styles. And just to add one more thing, I think that it's okay to feel really unmotivated and uninspired and like writing hurts and it sucks a lot of times because, I mean, I've definitely felt that writing for The Exponent and there are weeks that I literally write like music reviews and I'm like, what is the point of this, you know? And, but actually, and I get a lot really frustrated because I'm like, I'm writing for a student newspaper, like I'm not making a difference kind of thing and even though I think our readership is like uh, 1,200 students. Like, it's very abstract that you don't really feel that. And just recently, I was talking to a girl who I interviewed a few months ago. And to be honest, I like, kind of forgot about her and forgot about her interview. And she was telling me how she was like really nervous for our interview, and it was a really big deal that she got interviewed by me. And I was like, oh yeah, like cool. And then she was telling me that a lot of news organizations interviewed her after our interview and they just basically copied and pasted my article into their description of her. Like, they were either like citing me or kind of just like republishing um, my, because I think I had like the most detailed description of her and whatever. And she was very impacted by this interaction that I really was like, Oh, yeah, like it was fine, it was an interview, or whatever. And I would say, like, hold off on being so hard about yourself about the impacts you have. I mean, what you guys were talking about, about the journal, I think is a really cool thing because, you know, who knows what different writing will do on campus. And I mean, even if it is just one person, I mean, that's an impact that was didn't ha happen before. So, yeah, that's cool. I guess, kind of to build off of that, what are the best strategies to encourage students to submit their research or work and participate in the submission or publishing cycle, you guys think? Or what motivates you? The first thing that comes to mind for me is this idea, and this is something that comes up in the Writing Center and also with Curiositas, is that research is STEM. I don't know if that's just like from my background or kind of like campus culture, but there is an idea I think that research has to be science or research has to be engineering. Um, and so for me personally, not coming from that background, I had to first unlearn that and realize that research happens across, across campus in all disciplines. Um, and so that's my first point of like encouragement, I think, is just realizing that any knowledge making that you're doing counts as research. Um, and that's kind of the first thing you have to recognize. Um, in terms of taking that next step and um, being confident in what you're doing and then kind of eventually building up to that publication stage. So that's one little drop in the bucket. Yeah, the way I got involved in public writing was I picked up the exponent one day long before I ever thought about writing for it and someone wrote an article called Things Donald Trump Did Right and I basically was like, wow, I guess anyone can write for the exponent. I'm going <laughs> to apply. <laughs> and I applied, and it turned out that two weeks later, they actually had an opening, and then I got a job. And then I, I kind of assumed that the culture section was a lot more free than it was. So I, you know, my last piece even got like ripped apart by my editor saying that this is, was not the opinion section. So, you know, I think it's. I think kind of what Abby said a little bit about STEM, I think it's okay to get involved in these like serious things for passionate kind of emotional reasons that aren't like cut perfect STEM like research things. 
You know, I'll also say that I think a lot of writing didn't make sense to me until I started at least seeing how it could be published. Like, um, and that's just something that I know about myself. I tend not to be motivated about things that I'm just doing for myself, so I've never been like a writer just so I could write. Um, and I think it's been a really motivating factor to see, I mean, both through the journal, but also through um, the lab I work in, um, have opportunities to write in a way that will actually be read and appreciated. Um, you know, I think there aren't often a lot of opportunities to genuinely write for others, and you know, it's, it's totally shifted my paradigm about what writing is and what writing can do. Um, and so I'd really encourage anybody to, to give it a try. Um, you know, I think the barrier to entry to public writing is a lot lower than it's usually made out to be. Um, and yeah, it really has been a paradigm shift for me. Um. I think a lot of it is just knowing what is out there and like what you can get published in. Like, I got two poems published in like my community college like creative writing journal. And like I wouldn't have done that if my professor hadn't been like, hey, like this exists. Um, you know, like I don't know where I can get things published on campus. Like, hey, can we get a creative writing journal at MSU? That would be nice. Um, that's that's my thoughts. Yeah. To follow up on that, I think like make connections, ask people, ask professors, ask your peers. Um, that's kind of how all of my publishing opportunities have, have happened is just by talking to people about what I'm interested in and finding out what other people are interested in and then making things happen. Um, so my other bit of advice is like, don't wait for it to happen for you. Like, mm -hmm. seek it out and talk to people about it. And if you don't see an opportunity, like, create one. Yeah, and I think um, I, I, I'll add two things. Um, the first thing I'll add is, you know, writing at the end of the day is just a tool. You know, the same way speaking is, and the same way, you know, whatever other creative medium you can come up with is. Writing functions to serve a purpose, and sometimes the scope of that purpose might be limited. So it's always valuable to, you know, emphasize that writing is an important fundamental to have, but at the end of the day, if it's not the best way to communicate something, don't worry. There's other ways to do it as well, you know, and in the end, when you try to build that skill set and try to build that toolbox, they always end up augmenting one another. You'll become a better speaker when you're a better writer. When you become a better writer, you'll become a better, better speaker. And it, it works in both ways. Um, but the other thing I want to say, too, is I think in terms of writing and the incentive to write, I think I, a lot of people feel like they don't have something important to say. And I would discourage anyone from actually thinking that. You always have something important to say, whether that's the subject of what you're writing about or the fact that you're the one saying it. In the end, there's always something interesting about the process of writing, whether it's on the authorial side or if it's on the actual product end of it. So never discount whatever product you think you might come up with just because you've discounted yourself from being a component of that process. Always value whatever it is that you can come up with, and I think what, what, what I would love to see is a community here at MSU where students are engaged with each other and supportive of each other to make sure that not only are the products of writing you know, appreciated by everyone, but also that the stories that we're all individually telling are something that we're engaging with and interacting with and debating with and discussing. You can maybe finish that question just with a quick plug. We're publishing one of these every semester, and so if you want a real easy way to get into the publishing process, um, if you go to our website, montana.edu slash curiositas, um, we'd love to publish any one of you. Um, yeah, we're going to have one going out this, uh, this spring in a couple weeks, but then we're going to start accepting submissions for a summer issue and a, and a fall issue after that. And so if anybody's interested, come up and talk to me or any of that. We'd love to publish any of you. A slightly more convoluted way of getting published would be to apply to work at the writing center and then the second semester you might be put on the orange couch committee if that's still a thing because it kind of morphs semester to semester um so you know long game <laughs> yeah that's true actually i am being published through my work at the writing center as well which i didn't know that um writing center theory was a thing 
until I started at the Writing Center, but here I am getting published in it, so you never know what opportunities are going to come your way. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, I applied for the a job at the Exponent before they even were offering one, and then they were like, oh, we found the submission in our mailbox. So, um, and I know that when Exponent openings happen, we don't announce them very well, so if you ever would want to be interested in that, I would recommend applying even if there's no offer yet. And also, I know we publish letters to the editor, so if any of you are interested in that, unfortunately most of ours are kind of problematic ones, so if you guys have anything positive to say, or, or negative, but you know, just don't make them like racially targeted, so. I guess to build off of like the, all the different opportunities and the things that you guys have been doing, like why would you recommend pursuing writing and publishing while in your undergraduate? Builds credibility and it gets your name out there. I mean, nothing, if, if you guys have graduate or professional aspirations, nothing can give you, I think, a more straightforward path to being considered credible than publications, particularly in science. You know, if you show up, and you have papers to your name, that tells people that you, you can do the job and if you can talk about it, that's just more credit to you, so, yeah. The other thing is like, honestly, the, I am just of the belief that, you know, we should all aspire to be public figures, we should all aspire to change society and our community for the better, and I think, well, I know for me, Writing is probably, for the exponent, is probably one of the only ways I do that, especially in Montana, Bozeman specifically, where it's not like there are, you know, activist marches or endless opportunities for, you know, community engagement. Bozeman is a pretty isolated place. There's not a ton of opportunities for, you know, getting yourself out there into the professional world and engaging in that. and one of the limited ways is writing, and I think that, you know, here in such an isolated place, it is helpful that, you know, we can start to engage with the community and start to try to make change in whatever ways are available. I think to that end, something specific that I might mention, um, this is a bit of a tangent, but we're coming up on political midterm season, and actually the first, uh, I think the first time that I was actually doing a lot of high throughput writing for a public audience was working for a congressional campaign um, and they kind of stuck me in a corner writing weekly newsletters, um, which isn't the most fun, uh, but it was a good exposure for, you know, how to write and use that writing to, you know, further a cause that I believe in. Um, and Campaigns are always looking for people who can write or who are interested in writing, so uh, I think that's a really good way to maybe get your foot in the door. Um, typically, I mean, Montana campaigns are kind of weird. You can usually just find the campaign manager's email and email them. Um, so if you have any interest in doing that, pick some campaigns and send some emails. It's a really great way to start doing um, writing, and especially if it's something you're, you're passionate about. Um, it's a great experience, I'd say. Sorry, that's a bit of a tangent and step back, but. I okay, agree, and I think we, I mean, we touched on this already, but like writing happens in all disciplines, like no matter what you're doing, you're gonna be doing some sort of writing and communicating. And so having experience with not only the publishing process, but the writing process and feedback um, is really good experience to have and to be familiar with what that looks like, especially if you do wanna um, continue I mean, you're going to have to do some sort of writing in your future, I'm assuming. Um, but especially if you're going to go to higher education or anything after undergrad, having that experience um, is really helpful because you know if it's something that you're interested in or you're not interested in. I think it's really good for you to work with like an editor or like some oversight mm -hmm. and like kind of just, you don't have full ownership of it, like, you know. There's someone who's like kind of just like keeping you in line, like, okay, that's fun, but is that actually like serving the purpose of the piece? Maybe you need to rewrite that. Yeah, it's good for you. It's a good experience. Um, 
I guess to, to your point, Abby, like a lot of you guys are, are graduating seniors. So what do you think you're going to sort of take forward from like this experience specifically into your future? Like how do you think writing and publishing will impact you? I, I, I can go. <laughs> I am about to accept a position as a grant writer, so writing is literally going to be my job, um, which is something I didn't think was possible for myself until I got involved with all of this other writing and realized that this is something that I'm actually really interested in and, you know, based on my chosen degree, might not have gotten exposed to in any other way. I'm not a graduating senior, but <laughs> <laughs> I know that something I do want to, my current plan is to do law school after, and I've already started looking at applications for law school, and almost all of them have two to three application letters, and it's a really nice thing to at least see that and know, you know, I have experience writing, yes, but I also have experience with a lot of people telling me what I, you know, have done wrong, how to do it better. I have res I have people out there who would be willing to read my stuff because I've made these connections. And it's, you know, like if you're weighing, you know, applications, GPA, LSAT score, it's nice to at least be a little confident about one of those, like, yeah, I have some resources. I think while my career path is kind of veering away from publications specifically, I think that the tools and the ways in which I now, because I think when you're working through publication, you do have that other person telling you the ways in which you should be editing your writing and how to make it more concise, but I think that through like osmosis, you know that about your own writing and you can use that to your advantage, where now I know that I, I can see my writing through another person's eyes and use that even when I'm by myself. Even when I'm not writing for research, I'm able to use those tools. I'd imagine Pusha and I are going to give just about the same answer. Um, but I'll let you go first because I think I have a, a different spin on it. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think for both Owen and I, like publishing is kind of the boat by which you stay afloat in science. But I mean, also, I mean, I, I work with things like CRISPR technologies, which are incredibly controversial and powerful and things like that. And, you know, one thing I will say is my love for writing is the same thing that I love about reading as well. You know, you get to tell stories and you get to experience stories. And if you read authors like Atul Gawande, who, you know, talk in depth about different experiences in the medical field, whether it's on the patient or doctor side, or they, or, or you read people like you know Jennifer Doudna and Sam Sternberg who talk about the history of CRISPR technologies. You know, it gives my own, myself an aspiration to want to write my own book in the future, whatever that topic is on. Maybe it's on neurodegenerative disorders or something. But to capture an arena of society and translate that into something that the public can read and consume, and you can, you know, contribute to that dialogue or that discourse with, is something that's really exciting for me. So beyond writing articles that I know I'll have to do for professional journals. I'd love to be able to write a book one day and just like enjoy the process of writing as a means to just relay my experiences and the narratives that I've accumulated throughout my life for other people to consume and, and understand and appreciate. You even took my spin on oh, it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that's where you were going with it. Sorry. No, I do. I think more similar than we did. <laughs> I, I think we're in a similar boat. You know, what, what I'm really interested in long term is what's called translational science. So, you know, taking the, the stuff that's happening in labs across the world, really, um, and making sure that information goes where it needs to go. You know, telling the stories to the people who need to hear them. Um, you know, I'm struck by, I don't know if anybody here has read anything that David Quammen has ever written. Um, so he wrote Spillover, um, which is probably my favorite book. Spillover actually made me cry. And I may be in the minority of people for whom <laughs> Spillover made them cry. Um, but I just think it's, it's so well written and it really, it makes me feel passionate about the issue of infectious disease. You know, he predicted the world we live in now. Um, and, you know, I think that's where science writing needs to be. You know, we need to be making people cry and think and wonder about how 
the science and the research that's happening in every discipline around us all the time is going to affect our lives and our world moving forward. And I think there aren't enough researchers out there who have really embraced the tool of writing for social change. Um, and yeah, I hope that I can be one small part of a broader movement to, to make the world better with, with science communication and science writing. I agree. I think we should make more people cry. I'm not going anywhere with that. Um, I'm also not a graduating senior. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with my life, but like, I don't, you know, whatever the resume stuff, I just know that I'm going to be going out into my life and I'm going to be like, yeah, I have strong writing skills. Like, no one's ever going to take that away from me. Like, mm -hmm. I have this experience. Yeah, and we should make more people cry. Yeah. A lot of questions from the audience. <laughs> uh, do you think how writing is taught drives people away from writing? Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I think, well, in the writing center and then also I think in our major, we talk a lot about the ways in which, like, writing just the, the, the structures around writing can be weaponized against people who aren't in like academic circles. I think especially when we're talking about publishing and we're talking about writing in academic ways, it has an air of professionality and also like superiority around it that I think makes some people feel excluded and like they can't participate in it. And I think in American Studies, one thing that we really break down is the stereotypical what counts as writing because I think my personal interpretation of writing is anything it's the text you just sent it's the essay you wrote it's the graffiti on a wall all of it is writing in my opinion so I think when we funnel it down to just an essay or an academic paper we're really limiting the scope and we're limiting who feels as though they can participate in the act of writing I also think investigating why that happens is very beneficial mm -hmm. to how I approach writing and how I've learned how to write because I think when I first started writing I was taught that Wikipedia wasn't a source I had to get everything from you know something that's cited and now as Sarah said through American Studies and a very expanded idea of what is text what is writing now I cite like oral histories and discussions among you know native communities that have recordings and when a teacher tries to argue with me and tell me that it's not citable I argue back and usually the teacher agrees that it is something that I'm able to include and I think that trying to push back against those negative ways that you feel writing is taught can be really helpful Also, like, unlearning the formulaic, like, five-paragraph essay was huge for me. <laughs> Not that I don't still use that sometimes, um, but I think there is, like, that one way that, especially, at least in my experience in high school, um, writing was taught to me, like, first paragraph is your introduction and your thesis statement at the end, one nice sentence with all your main ideas, and then paragraph one is topic one with supporting evidence paragraph, you know, that whole thing in the end with the conclusion, and just, like, unlearning that that is the only like way to write something was really huge for me because it it just feels boring right to do that formula for everything and it doesn't work for everything and so i think you know like you guys both mentioned broadening beyond the way things are taught and learning that anything can be writing is kind of freeing and also exciting because then you can kind of pursue so many different things to copy owen a quick plug is uh Citizen by Claudia Rankine, and it really restructured the way I feel confident about writing and the fact that a sentence can stand by itself if you want it to. And, you know, all different formats and styles of writing were done for the first time once, you know. So be bold about it as long as you feel okay maybe getting a different grade than you want. But. <laughs> Yeah, and I think maybe also to, I don't know if it's playing devil, devil's advocate, but I think the other thing that 
is being mentioned is that just as much as writing is taught, you also have to do that part yourself. You know, like it's like figure skating. Even when you watch the Olympics and you watch these people do amazing tricks or beautiful sequences, that's not just because a coach said, hey, this is A, this is B, you go from here to there and you just do X, Y, and Z in the middle. No, they, they spend time on the ice cultivating that skill set, doing what they like and identifying the style that it is that they really enjoy and express themselves with. So I would suggest like, as much as you can write and be taught how to write, you also have to read and enjoy what it is that you like about language, find the books and the styles that gravitate towards, and then experiment with those. And it doesn't have to be good. It can be the worst stuff ever. It can be incomplete and it can be you know, stuff that you hate 10 years or one day down the line. But at the end of the day, if you don't mess around with it and figure out what it is that you want to do, it's, it's hard to say that a teacher is going to be the person who actually takes you from point A to point where you want to be. That wasn't a pun. It's a good question. What other types of things would you use to recommend to like alter the way that we're told the formulae we write? You mean in reference to my uh, citizen recommendation? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's hard. I, I don't think know if you guys have anything. But. Take a Native American studies class. Mm -hmm. Take several. Mm -hmm. Take a lot. Take as many as you can. Because I think those classes deconstruct so many truths, fundamental truths about writing and about learning and about what is credible. Um, and it really opens, it opened up my eyes a lot to the ways in which I was limiting what I read and I was also limiting what I wrote when I was just sticking to the formulaic and I think that it can be like a very beneficial experience. Also they're fascinating and the faculty is great so yeah. that's why. I think any type of learning or like unlearning is just about exposure and so just reading a bunch of things that are really weird and don't follow conventions mm -hmm. and then also a lot of learning isn't like reading or like you know writing or like create it's talking about it and so just starting conversations with friends about writing like hey like why are we doing it this way um can be really useful and like just immersing yourself in talking about writing um has been really instrumental mm -hmm. for me at the writing center also something i do i mean obviously i work at the writing center but i also make hella appointments there because they help me like break out of that i know that i'm comfortable <laughs> in my formulaic and so I'll come to them and say, I'm trying to do this with it, like how can I? And then having that conversation is really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the times I won't, I will make appointments and I won't even necessarily be like, hey, like let's look at my writing. I'll just be like, hey, I don't have anything. Can we talk about it? I need emotional support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Awesome, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, getting back to your question about what text, um, I feel like all the literature majors are gonna judge me for this, but uh, <laughs> for me, like reading, Beat generation books really like helped me in very particular ways. Um, yeah, I knew that. That's it. That's very valid. For me, it was like Jack Kerouac primarily, Allen Ginsberg. Um, she's not beat, but Patti Smith writes mm -hmm. as well. And if you've ever read Coral Sea, that restructured my writing probably the most out of anything I've ever read. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and we're, we're, we're kind of going to wrap up, I guess, like, do you guys have any more questions? Please throw them. We can also hang around for a minute, and if you want one-on-one -on -one just to chat to us, we can do that. Yeah. So should we do that? Or? Yeah, we could do that, too. I mean, I've got a whole list of questions, but <laughs> if you want to come up and interact, actually, like, that might be more about what we're talking about with writing and, and how it's a more personal interaction. <laughs> 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 <laughs>